The story of the Christ Apostolic Church will not be complete without Prophet Dr. Tio Obadari, a Nigerian televangelist and the general evangelist of the CAC Church worldwide. Born on April 11, 1925 in Elisha Ocean State, Nigeria, Prophet Tio Obadari was baptized in 1949 and worked as an evangelist with the Apostolic Church from 1953 to 1957, following which he joined the Christ Apostolic Church at the behest of Joseph Ayo Babalola in 1954. He later studied at the Apostolic Church Theological Seminary. At a revival in Songwebado, a woman prophesied for more than two hours and gave Prophet Obadari a message that God wanted him to take the gospel to his citizens abroad because those citizens had forsaken God. Based on these prophetic instructions, Prophet Obadari traveled abroad and brought the gospel both to the United States and Europe. In 1982, he founded the Christ Apostolic Church of America in New York. Located in the East Harlem at 112th Street, corner of Lexington Avenue, the first Nigerian CSC church in the United States was therefore established. At the revival meeting and crusades in New York, Prophet T. Obadari share the love of Christ and the power of God's gospel with troubled souls between 1982 to 1989. In the early 1990s, Prophet Obadari faced an uphill battle against some CAC officials in Nigeria, which the Prophet himself believed was a work of devil. In September 1992, Prophet Obadari was prevented from entering the East Alum Church when he arrived for his usual annual revival. Despite series of persecution against him, both in Nigeria and abroad, Prophet Obadari endured and decided not to let the work of God suffer. As such, he let go of the East Alum New York Church, but continued his ministry and the propagation of Jesus Christ elsewhere, where Satan was not able to pollute. He quadrupled his efforts and expanded to many other parts of the United States, Canada, and Europe. On October 11, 1992, Elders Dotoni Shek Shegmwaje Wale, Abraham Obadari, and Deborah Obadari left the East Harlem Church, leased a new space from St. Mark's Church and re-establish the CAC Church Wosam. Although there were merely four members in attendance in October 11, 1992, but to the glory of God, by the end of the calendar year of 1993, the membership enrollment had increased to over 35. In my heart. The growth was achieved through membership drive and the continual assistance of the Holy Spirit through the efforts of the Revival Committee and the entire membership of the church. By the end of 1994, membership had increased to 60. A revival was organized and the very first national convention was held at St. Mark's Church, where CSC members across the United States were in attendance 
under the leadership of Prophet Tio Obadari. By 1996, a new building was purchased in Stockton Boulevard in Jamaica, New York. And by 1997, the CAC Queens branch was in full swing at this location. Renovations of the new building was completed in 2001. Currently, membership enrollment at the CAC Queens Church is about 350 people. Pastor Ibrahim Obadari explained in an interview that the road to success was very rough at the beginning.
Uh, since we've been here, I remember that even when we came here, there was only one side of the church. This building was two buildings, you know, when we came here. And eventually, because of expansion, we became one. And many people have even been out there, I mean, have been, um, I won't say transfer, I don't know what the word to use, but I've, I've, been, I've left to establish more and more uh, churches from here. We have Brooklyn, we have uh, Far Rockaway, we have so many other churches from people that have left here. So we've always been growing, and we thank God for that. Thank you very much, Dr. Oniboku, for the great and informative history of the church in its early years of its existence. Christ Apostolic Church was moved to Queens in the year 1997, and today we're celebrating our 25th year anniversary. This is a milestone in the history of the TAC Church. I had the opportunity to interview some pastors and members of this great church, and they testified to the goodness of God in this household. And they also shed light on the achievement and goals they attain as members. Today we're celebrating our 25th year anniversary. How do you feel about this? Oh, I'm so excited. I'm really happy that I'm part of it. I'm 
really, really happy. In the first place, the pastor is awesome. The members are, I, I don't know how to qualify them. There is love in this church. I can remember every time something happens to me, the way they rally around me, and I, I just love everybody, and everybody loves me. I know everybody loves me, and I can't see me myself go to another church. I just love everything here, and I'm happy that I'm part of the 25 years anniversary. Thank you, Anton, for that information on the current state of the CAC Wosam from 1997 to the present. As you are aware, the 25th anniversary began on August 12th through the 20th. In his third revival meeting for the 25th anniversary message, Dr. Brown cited 2 Samuel chapter 23, verses 13 to 16, entitled there is water in the well. In its seven, Dr. Brown told the CSC Wosam to thank God for its current status and focus on where God is taking them now. After his seven, Dr. Brown went into prayers with members. The water of life, the water of speed, the water of hope, I draw I draw, 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 One of the biggest community services of the CSC Wosam is the food bank. For example, the Queen's Church has continued to record success stories in distributing to its community by donating clothing, shoes, money and food to the poor and the needy. Yes. We are in the heart of South Jamaica. There is need. There is need. 
So we understand what Christ would do. He would take care of the physical needs of people as he takes care of the uh, uh, spiritual. And that's precisely what we're out here to do. We understand that the people in our area, they, they have needs. And thank God for uh, Food Bank of New York and uh, United Way. Um, so they, they supply us what we in turn give to the people so that they are, uh, their needs are being met. Are there any con financial contributions from your members? Yes, there are. Yes, once a month we collect needy offering, and that's also available to meet the needs uh, when we need to uh, add to what uh, what uh, food bank is giving to us. We we take from there, and various other times when individuals come in, we uh, assist them. So yes, not only financially are we contributing, the members are contributing their time. Saturday coming here to serve people that is plus prayers that's contribution what word would you like to say to church members at this anniversary I the want to I want to first of all thank God for church members for what they've been doing all this while but I want to encourage them to do more because the law says that there will always be the poor among you. So it's essential that we keep that in our mind and continue to support. We need more volunteers from the church and from outside of the church. We need more donations so that we can be of service better than we have been uh, doing before. Uh, what's your name, sir? LeVan Cooper. How long have you been working with the World Center to distribute food to people they need it? Hold on nine years. Tell me more about your experience Within these nine years, you've been helping with uh, World Center. Yes. Well, I was hospitalized for like two months. They came to see me twice a week. We took care of whatever I needed to be taken care of. And I came on back after I got out of the hospital. And I'm back to working with them again. Can you tell us your experience working with these people online? We see there was a long line. What is your experience in the last nine years as far as this church and the people in the community? You learn how to get along with mostly everyone. You're dealing with like seven or eight nationalities here, more. And you have to try to get along with them as much as you can. They're always good and bad in every line. But we deal with them accordingly. In terms of the food, the they're serving. What do you think of that program itself that the church is doing, that most churches need to learn from this church? We open every Saturday from 10 to 12. I've never closed Holly. And we serve the community whatever we have. And they come out from 200 to 50, no less than 150 each week. We located 108 in Southern Boulevard. The food pantry, you are here, and I know you've been there years. Yes. What was the reason for you being a food pantry? Uh, food pantry is under my ministry. Uh, it's been very helpful to the society, very helpful to the neighborhood, very helpful. There is nothing as rewarding as seeing people with smiles on their faces saying, thank you for giving us this. Thank you for fighting for this. Thank you for providing this for us. And it's been wonderful. It's been wonderful. It's a place you come and get happy from seeing people get, get, their, uh, get uh, their, their, their need. Long after we are gone, prayer, movement don't let the gospel be stagnant and that's why we've been telling our children here our people the people coming behind us the 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 gospel will never stay dormant take it out there the founder founded it because of this that was his motivation factor that was his calling it should be our calling to keep it going and I want you all to, to understand that I am standing upon the rock of ages. I want you to understand that despite to all persecutions and anything of envy, the Lord that laid his hand upon me and prayed for me and upholding me, I am now a victor. Let me glad. 
He has made me glad I am so glad I will rejoice For He has made me glad He has made me glad He has made me glad I am so glad I will rejoice For He has made me glad